guys, this is Jackie M. If you're watching, hi guys, this is Jackie M. If you're watching me, I'm just having a couple of technical um, stuff to sort out, so bear with me. Um, and if uh, I hope that okay, you can hear me okay. And I'm just setting. I'm running two concurrent live streams, so. This one's off YouTube, obviously, and I'm running another one off um, Facebook Live. So just give me a couple of minutes while I get everything set up. We've just had uh, some technical issues here. And hopefully, it should manage through the. Okay, next. <laughs> And if you're catching me on YouTube, I haven't had any problems with YouTube at all, okay? Um, but I have had problems with Facebook. So if, um, if at some point, if you're watching off one or the other and it doesn't work or something goes wrong, uh, just hop onto my other channel, okay? So if you're watching me on YouTube, it's uh, JackieM.com. Oh, I keep doing this wrong. It's YouTube.com slash JackieM. And if you're watching me on Facebook, you should be able to find my stream on uh, on uh, facebook.com slash Jackie M. Food is one of the ways you can watch me. So um, let's go live here. Video title. Um, no one wants a bit of attention. So no, we ain't going to come down here. Two minutes. Okay. It's okay. Good boy. Okay. Ah. Uh, uh, how to make of that of that um, thermo cool live number three with Jackie M. Okay, hopefully that reads okay. And tags Malaysian cooking and Jackie M. Thermo cool. Okay, go live. Let's do this. You are streaming to Facebook Live. I'm hoping there's no feedback anywhere. Um, okay. Okay. Everyone hear me okay? If anyone's got any problems, I'm just going to make sure everything's running okay. Just give me two seconds. I'm just going to open up on Facebook. Uh, I'll just give my assistant Cyan, who's doing this remotely, to be able to share this across some of my social media channels. And if you're watching this on face, uh, Facebook or on YouTube, please share this out to all your friends and uh, for those who are interested in Malaysian cooking and want to learn a little bit about how to use your thermal cook. It doesn't have to be a thermal cook if you don't have one. It can be any kitchen machine or even if you're just exploring its possibilities. And in fact, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to cover will show you how to do all this without using either. Okay, uh, let me just check. Cyan, if you're watching this, can you just confirm you can hear me okay on Facebook? Let me just check. Yeah, is it streaming yet? It's not showing up yet. Just give me a second. And as I was saying, we've had some technical issues with Facebook streaming for the last couple of weeks. So if you're watching this on Facebook and at some point something plays up, hop over to YouTube. The link should be posted um, in um, on, on uh, it should be posted within the same Facebook post itself. Okay. Let me just quickly check. Okay, it looks like I am here. Okay, guys. Right, now, let's get started. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Jackie M, and this is the third in my series of four live broadcasts covering uh, Malaysian dishes using your thermocook, okay? Let me just quickly check my messages here. Two seconds. Okay, cool. And my audio is okay. Right. 
Okay. So as I was saying, my name is Jackie M. If you're just joining me on YouTube, and I'm really sorry about this. Uh, I hate when I'm watching live broadcasts and they take 10 minutes to get their act together because they're, 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 they're killing time. I'm not doing that. I'm just doing this because we're having some technical issues because of uh, the whole, if you're familiar with Google Hangouts on air, the whole uh, swap over to YouTube Live is just confusing my uh, assistant a little bit in terms of how to set it up. So there was a little bit of a technical issue we had to iron out with running off YouTube Live today. Anyway, okay, otak, otak. Otak, otak is um, literally in Malay means brains. And people always say, oh, I wonder why this dish is called brains. Nobody really knows. You can hypothesize uh, uh, and, 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 and come up with all sorts of ideas. Some people say it's because it looks like scrambled eggs and looks like brains and, and, and that sort of stuff. But essentially, I don't think anyone really has a definitive answer as to why it was called brains. If you do, let me know. A lot of Malaysians are very opinionated about their Malaysian food. Um, but I'm going to show you. Um, as is the case with a lot of Malaysian dishes, there are a lot of regional variations to this dish, okay? Now, um, the two main uh, divides in Malaysian cuisine can be uh, 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 generally geographic in nature. So we always talk about like Penang Cha Kui Tia, which is up north in Penang. If you know your geography a little bit, Penang is up north. Or, you know, the other version of Cha Kui Tia, which is a fried noodle dish, is the southern version, sort of like KL and downwards. I happen to have grown up in Malaysia in the southern part. Um, so a lot of my dishes are influenced by the southern style of cooking. And it is also, in fact, reflected to some extent by some Singaporean versions of the same dish because Singapore is right down at the bottom uh, of um, uh, below the Malaysian Peninsula, so basically right down south. Okay, so now this particular thing I'm going to make is called otta otta. Like I said, essentially it's a fill, uh, fish cakes, and I'm just going to talk while I I, I I I handle this fish here. This is a piece of mackerel that I bought yesterday from the Asian grocery store. And I'm just going to start uh, cutting it up. And the reason why I thought I might show you this particular dish is because I want to, to some extent, show you how to make a fish paste. And I've covered that in a separate YouTube video in the past. And I'm being very random over here. Usually, I'm a little bit more elegant with this. but. Uh, and usually I don't buy a cutlet like this. I usually buy like a whole strip of the side. Okay, so this is a basically a mackerel chunk, and I'm going to pull out the bones. And essentially, what I want to do first is make a fish paste out of this, and then I'm going to add all kinds of seasoning, and then I'm going to wrap it up, and I'm going to pan fry it. I know it says grilled fish cake, but um, um, I don't have a grill here with me. Usually in Malaysia, we would grill on a charcoal fire, okay? Now, um, I'm just pulling out some of the bones, and the way you would make fish paste, I'm going to take advantage of the thermal cook here for that. Um, and usually I need a spoon. I have to admit, when I was doing this for my restaurant, for my business, I used to buy pre-made fish paste because it was just easier and also um, sometimes cheaper as well because mackerel can be quite expensive. So what you would do in Malaysia, or you know, if you were making your own fish paste, is you would buy uh, some a type of fish that's a little bit um, sticky. It's, um, how would you describe it? That, that has a bit of a starchiness to it, okay? Um, because you want the end product once you've processed this, uh, to have um, some stickiness to it. So what I'm doing is just scraping it off the skin. And I remember doing this at home back in Malaysia when my mom used to make fish balls and all that. So this is something, this is a technique that's useful for making not just this particular recipe, but if you're making all kinds of dishes like, um, you know, that require fish in it. If you think of fish cakes, uh, you think of fish balls, think of uh, stuff, vegetables, all kinds of stuff. This is very handful to them, okay? So what I'm doing is just scraping the flesh off the fish. And like I said, usually it's a little bit more elegant than this because usually I'll get a whole uh, side of fish and the bone's already been taken out. But this this, this particular chunk that I happen to get has a lot of bone in it because it's got the, the, the stomach cavity and all that as well. So 
usually you would just scrape this and if you can't get mackerel um, my mom's fish of choice here in Australia is actually redfish fillets um, you can use vasa as well if you buy pre-made fish paste it's usually made with vasa right so I'm just pulling out some of the bones and what I want to do is throw it in the thermo cook and um, I was uh, chatting with Gail who's one of the people who've been following this series earlier and she noticed I was struggling with the lemongrass last week and she's got one of these thermo cooks as well and she told me look by the way if I try the smoothie setting <coughs> um, it works perfectly okay so I was going to try it today but I'm not using lemongrass for this particular recipe because I'm going to explain why as I go along here so I'm just putting the fish meat in here like I said I'm using mackerel but you can use any kind of fish really uh, you're just going to make uh, as long as it's not too um, as long as it's got a little bit of starch in it right so that goes in there and what I want to do is I'm going to put a little bit of water usually if you're doing it in larger quantities you want to use ice water or, 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 or like even ice cubes would be useful so I'm just going to add a little bit of water in here and and I'm adding a bit of tapioca starch if you can't get that tapioca starch um, corn, corn flour is fine as well but tapioca flour has a little bit more um, um, oomph to it so you might have to use double the amount of corn flour to what's stated in the recipe for tapioca flour. So I've got that. And usually if I was making fish um, fish cake or, or fish bowls or something, I'll put a bit of salt and also a bit of MSG. I know people don't like to hear about MSG, so I'm not going to put that in. I've uh, got that and usually a bit of pepper. Let me just see if I've got pepper. Yep. And that would just give you a, 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 a fish paste base that you can then use in all kinds of different recipes right but for it for today we're going to use it for otak otak now you got to be careful when you're handling fish um, especially with a machine that's as powerful as this that you don't overwork it um, the blades can get quite hot when they've been spinning for too long so you don't want to let it um, spin at a high speed for like a, a, a you know a long period of time you just want to pulse it just about because you might end up actually um, half cooking your fish and that's not good okay so let's just um, do a quick pulse let's see how it is okay so i've got it like this i don't know if you can see it I would usually actually put a bit more. I would usually actually put a bit more water in it if I were making fish bowl or something similar. But I'll just hold that for you to see on camera. There you go. And the tapioca starch or corn starch just helps to hold it together. I just managed to drop some of this on my laptop. <laughs> there you go. So that's your fish paste. Right, so next time you see it, next time you eat a bowl of a, of a, of fish bowl noodles or something like that at your Asian restaurant, basically they're all made from fish paste, right? And this, this even actually feels to me like it's a little bit overworked, so you just got to be a bit careful. Um, and usually the, if you're making fish bowls um, in large quantities, of course, the Chinese, because the whole idea of a, uh, fish bowls and fish cakes is actually uh, basically uh, a Chinese invention. The Chinese are very big on textures and on bounds and that sort of stuff, right? So uh, it's not just about whether something is uh, uh, flavorsome or something. The Chinese are very big on like how it feels in your mouth. So if you watch a movie called uh, God of Cookery, go and look it up, God of Cookery by Stephen Chow from Hong Kong. Uh, he talks about making beef bowls and about the bounce. And the way you get the bounce when you're making fish bowls is that you kind of like a throw it in a in a pot until you basically squeeze all the air out of it. 
so that it, it, it becomes really bouncy in your mouth. Okay. But for this particular dish, it doesn't matter because we're using it kind of like a, you know, like I said, with, with all these different spices and all that, and the end result is different. So I've got that out. And what I'm going to do, add all the other uh, spices to it. Now, I mentioned in the thermal cook uh, group, if you just excuse me, I'm going to grab another bowl. Now, I'm, I mentioned in the thermo cook group, right, that I was going to do two versions of uh, Ota Ota today, but I've decided to actually keep this quite simple because I think that two versions may be overkill. But I'm going to talk a little bit about the other version. This particular version, like I said, I grew up in the south of Malaysia, in the south of the peninsula of Malaysia. So uh, my version is uh, southern influence, and it's almost completely different to the, the, the northern version. And it annoys people because people see me here in Australia with my blonde hair and all that, and they assume that I'm not um, kosher, Malaysian, <coughs> right? And most people, when they go to Malaysia for holiday, they're more familiar with, the, uh, with Penang, which is up north, because Penang is always touted as a tourist destination and Penang is famous for its food. So when they eat my cha kui diao and it doesn't taste like what they had in Penang, they'll think I'm not authentic. But in fact, it's because of the difference um, in geography. Okay, now the southern version, right? I'm just gonna put some fish, uh, some coconut cream in it. And crack an egg in it. Now the particular recipe, I just noticed just before we went on air, did not have belacan, and I've covered belacan, but I'm just going to mention this again. Here, I've covered this in my past sessions. I'm using the belacan powder over here, right? Belacan is a Malaysian uh, shrimp paste. It's also known as terasio. It's just a shrimp paste in Thailand. Um, but I use the powdered form because it's simplified and it basically eliminates the need for me to toast it until it's flavorsome and it crumbles, okay? So my original recipe, which I use in my restaurant, has some belacan in it. And like I said, I mean, I, I noticed in my recipe that you guys have, it does not have belacan in it. And the reason for that is that it came from my cookbook. And my cookbook was edited by, by an American who, when she was going through my recipes, we were going, we were basically going back and forth, back and forth about, you know, this and that, because uh, as an American editor, she had no idea about my Asian ingredients. So she basically got me to, um, I guess, um, uh, compromise on a lot of my recipes so that uh, it, it didn't stump people too much who were attempting to cook these dishes, okay? So it was left out on purpose and I forgot that we left it out. Um, the other thing I'm going to add in is some chicken powder. Again, another ingredient I've covered in my previous um, broadcast. Chicken powder is uh, essentially like chicken stock cubes. And um, yeah, in fact, in my original uh, cookbook, it actually said chicken stock cubes, again, um, instigated by my American editor. Okay, so I'm just going to put this away. Now, uh, the other ingredient that we're going to use is something called kaffir lime leaves. You may be able to find this. I'm not sure how um, fortunate you would be in finding this over in the UK, um, but this is what they look like. In some parts of the world, it's called double lime leaf. Um, here in Australia, we call it kaffir lime leaf. And in fact, it's quite funny, um, about 10, 15 years ago when I first started out and um, I put down kaffir lime leaf as an ingredient. I think it's Outlook or basically my email program used to censor me because it thought it didn't recognize the word kaffir. It thought it was basically a derogatory term in South Africa. Uh, you know, that it's used about the, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it's used as a derogatory term in South Africa. So it probably thought I was abusing people when I typed in the word kaffir. So it was uh, basically. Um, uh, uh, censor my emails like that. But this is what kaffir lime leaf is, and I want to shred this. Usually, I would put it in my thermal cook, but I generally uh, for these kind of ingredients that are so light and you, you know, and basically they're just so. I'm only using a tiny amount of it. You would need a little bit more than that for it to be able to work it work through properly. In your thermal cook, but usually I'll just throw in the thermal cook and just let it whisk until it's completely minced. But th for this kind of quantity, I'm just going to slice this through 
and I'm going to cover the differences between the northern and southern version of Ota Ota in a little bit, okay? And the difference is actually really quite, quite stark. So I've got some cafe lime leaves. They're just kind of like thinly shredded. I'm just going to put that in there. And I'm going to put some chili paste. This is just um, basically just dried chili that has been basically soaked in, boiled in water and then processed. And I'm not sure if I did it live on it last week or the week before, or uh, I did it off air. But you can just use uh, chili flakes if you want, or just leave it out if you don't like it. If you don't, if you don't like it too spicy. Okay. Another thing I want to add is uh, curry powder. And I mentioned the different types of curry powder you get in Malaysia. And for this recipe, I use a fish curry powder, but you can just use a regular curry powder. I have in the past, but this is uh, what it looks like. Okay. <coughs> and this is, that's just one of the brands you might find in Asian grocery stores. It will say fish curry powder down here, picture of a fish curry. But like I said, any kind of curry powder is fine. So I'm just putting a bit of that in there. And I'm putting uh, some, this is one of my cheat ingredients, right? This is just a crispy fried shallots. I'll just hold it up to you so you can see it. And you should be able to find that very, very easily at Asian grocery stores. Just bring that in. I'm going to put a bit of sugar in this as well. If you can hear that in the background, that's Noah trying to get some attention. Noah is my Down syndrome son, if you're not uh, familiar. He was on camera early on, if you missed the start of this. And speaking of which, like I said, um, my last couple of blog broadcasts, um, I've had trouble with my uh, Facebook feed. So you just have to, um, yeah, I've had trouble with my Facebook feed. So if you're watching this on Facebook and suddenly the audio goes or the video goes funny, you can watch this as well on YouTube, okay? Because this is running on my YouTube channel and the link should be in the same Facebook post. Um, Cyan, my assistant, is doing this remotely, but she should be commenting and basically telling people you can also click on this link to watch this uh, via YouTube. Um, the other thing I want to mention as well, and I hope this does not cause too much trouble, but the original YouTube session that we set up for this was set up incorrectly. So this is actually a new YouTube session. Um, so hopefully everyone who was sent an email telling them to click on that, a particular link to watch it on YouTube manages to find their way uh, over here. <laughs> okay, it's all very complicated. Um, but every one of my live broadcast sessions are run concurrently on YouTube and on Facebook. Okay, and they run using different technologies, which is uh, basically why you can watch it off one if the other one fails. And I'm just mixing this all up together now. I'm going to show you how it looks in a bit. And essentially, what you're going to get is kind of like a moussey custody mixture. Now, one thing I've got to mention. Um, about Ota Ota is that I didn't actually grow up eating this in my hometown in Surumba. We didn't get Ota Ota, certainly not in, uh, you know, <laughs> in the, the places I hung up for 17 years. Never saw Ota Ota. I didn't actually start eating it till uh, I went back to Malaysia for holidays after I moved over to Australia. Okay. Um, Ota Ota in the south is uh, well known in uh, state. Well, it's well known in Malacca and also in Johor, both southern states. And um, like I said, never saw it in Seremban where I grew up and didn't see it in KL where I visited quite often as well. Noe, Noe, want to say hello to everyone? Hey, want to say hello? Yeah, good boy. Okay. So this is what it looks like after everything's still mixed up. So remember, this was fish paste. Plus, um, it feels actually a little bit stiff. I might actually add a bit more uh, liquid to this. This is fish paste plus egg plus coconut cream plus curry powder, uh, onion. Like I said, I use dried onion. Um, plus uh, seasoning like a bit of sugar, a bit of shrimp paste, some chicken stock granules or chicken powder or um, 
If you don't want to use that, you can just use a little bit of salt, right? So, and, and it's got some kaffir lime leaves. So you've got this paste here, right? Now, in the south, this is cooked. Uh, this is grilled over charcoal fire, like a low charcoal fire. In, uh, and also, it's wrapped, unusually enough, in coconut leaves, okay? If you can think of like a, a coconut frond, it's got like lots of these thin uh, strips, right? Um, you would find in the southern part of Malaysia, if you travel there, that there, there are very long, skinny strips on charcoal uh, fire, and that's what Ota is, uh, is like. But here in Sydney, Australia, I've never seen any coconut leaves. If you're in the UK, I don't know if you might have any luck getting coconut leaves, but um, I had to make a call and use banana leaves early on, okay? And these are banana leaves. They are a little bit more easy to find here in Australia, in Sydney certainly, not necessarily year round. I mean, um, certain times of the year is virtually impossible to find. Other times of the year can be very expensive. Um, sometimes, um, generally you should be able to find it for about, about seven bucks a kilo or so. And this is how I would use it. I would cut it into strips like this. No, we can Can say hello? <laughs> Say hello to everyone. Noe, Say hello. Okay, everyone. This is Noah. That's my uh, son Noah. He's got Down syndrome. And if you uh, follow me online, there's always a little bit of a story behind uh, Noah and my integration of him into my brand and my business. And uh, there's actually he's going to be uh, appearing on Channel Ten next week. In fact, uh, with regards to this. Yeah, he's going to be uh, appearing on Studio 10 on Channel 10 next Friday, hopefully, if all things work out well, to talk about, uh, well, I'm going to be doing the talking, most <laughs> likely he can't talk, uh, the whole issue of, you know, basically integrating your kid into your life, um, your work life. Now, when I used to sell this in Malaysia, uh, in my restaurant, my Malaysian restaurant, um, and also at my market stalls, this is what I would do, right? So you get a strip of banana leaf, and usually just cut off the spine over here. Now, uh, surprise, no, I wouldn't say surprisingly, people get confused about which part of the banana leaf the food should go on to, right? And this is how it works. Basically, this is the, the colorful bright side, and this is the dull side. If you're using it to wrap food in, the food goes on the dull side, okay, and then you wrap it up. The nice green color is for aesthetics, and the dull side is for the food to go into. Now, so you've got this here, and usually a lot of um, recipes suggest that you soften the banana leaves over like a hot flame or something like that, and sometimes if the banana leaves are quite stiff, different, different batches are different, this one is quite young and quite, you know, soft which is fine sometimes they can be quite thick um, and quite stiff so in in those instances what you would do is um you know again you can soften it i, I don't like to boil it sometimes we, they suggest uh boiling it to because then you then you have to dry it and all that um i used to actually throw it in the microwave for 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 a few seconds right um but most of the time i find it's okay as is so this is what you would do just stick a tablespoon of it here right and then wrap it up like that just fold up the two sides and i used to use a stapler if i can find it here you go i used to use, I can keep it in my hand i used to use a stapler to staple it at both ends just like that and this is what it looks like. Okay. Now, if you uh, want to be very traditional, you would use bamboo sticks to hold the ends together. But um, having said that, when I went to Singapore, when I went to Malaysia, a lot of places were using staplers, uh, so staples to hold them in place. But yeah, like I said, if you want bamboo, 
six, you can do that. And there you go. Right? And I usually like to <coughs> I usually like to leave a little bit open here so that when it cooks it expands a little bit and you can see like a nice um, bit of grilled fish paste sticking through. Okay. So just gonna do one more and then we're gonna cook it. And the other compromise, like I said, usually it's wrapped with coconut leaves, which I can't find here in Sydney, Australia. The other compromise is that I pan fry it, right? Let me just get my stove. Noah, come to mama, please. Noah, come to mama. Okay, so I'm going to use my little portable stove here. And heat it up. And what I used to do, now, I used to, when I was selling this, I used to uh, basically grill it on a hot plate, right? And what you want to do is cook it for about 10 minutes total. So after about five minutes, flip it over, and I would drizzle a little bit of oil over the top. Cook it on medium heat, and cover it, just to help it cook through a little bit better. <laughs> now, I'm gonna talk about the other version of Ota Ota, right? And that's what we call the Penang version. And the Penang version, like I said, is almost complete be different. Penang, if you know your geography, is up north, and up north means it's closer to Thailand because Thailand is our northern neighbor. So a lot of uh, Penang's food is actually influenced by Thai cooking, or you know, I'm sure the <laughs> Penang guys aren't going to be impressed if I uh, push the point too far. But um, if you're familiar with Thai cooking, there's a version of Thai fish cake. Um, I think it's called Nampla. Um, but it's also it's uh, basically a kind of like a moussey fish paste that's steamed, right? Uh, the Penang Ota Ota is like that, very similar. And Penang Ota Ota is in fact wrapped using banana leaves, okay? So that's where I stole the idea from. So the southern version, remember, uses coconut leaves. So I'm using banana leaves because I can't find coconut leaves. Um, and the Penang version is steamed. And the other thing is the Penang version of Ota Ota is folded different. It's a, you use a big, bigger square piece, and the way you would fold it is you would basically kind of like get like a big triangular shape like this, and then you would steam it. And I wanted to show you uh, steaming it in the thermo cook, but like I said, I just wanted to be able to show you how I make the fish paste and talk a little bit about it. So that wasn't going to give us enough time um, to do that. The other thing about Penang cooking is that it's more subtle in flavor. So um, you notice I use a fish curry powder in the southern version. Um, the northern version does not use curry powder in its seasoning. It uses instead all these fresh ingredients like uh, galangal, turmeric, and lemongrass. And um, that's why I was... Uh, uh, Gay was telling me, oh, I should uh, use the, you know, try having a go at uh, processing lemongrass using the smoothie setting on the thermo cook tonight. And I said, yeah, I'm going to give it a call, I'll give it a try, and I'm going to blame her if it doesn't. Well, I was just kidding, of course. Um, <coughs> but these are the ingredients that you would be processing. So you've got the lemongrass, and this is galanga. If you're not familiar with galanga, galanga is usually a a very very tough root vegetable uh, it's like ginger but tougher um, so it's always a very very difficult um, uh, spice to process but the thermo cook handles it beautifully I actually shot a video of that if you want to check out my YouTube channel which is youtube.com slash Jackie M and you should be able to find a YouTube video by me showing how the thermo cook um, 
basically handles these kinds of ingredients. I think it's the one that's called a, a comparison or review of the thermal cook, right? And this is turmeric, and this is what it looks like. So if you can imagine a similar dish uh, using fish, but in this instance, the fish does not get pureed into a paste, it gets sliced up, okay? So you can play around. The idea is the same, the seasoning is the same, bit of sugar, bit of a salt or chicken powder, a uh, bit of balachan, um, bit of onion, right? And usually, like I said, in both recipes, they usually use fresh onion. I'm just cheating over here. So a bit of onion and um, a bit of garlic in the, uh, uh, the Penang version. And um, so, and instead of the curry powder, uh, basically a combination of these three spices. Turmeric, galangal, lemongrass, all processed and blended in. And also usually they use a bit of candle nut. Um, if you're familiar with candle nut, it's kind of like a really waxy kind of nut. And it just kind of like helps to hold everything together. And it actually has uh, more eggs in it. You probably use double the amount of egg as what I use in this particular recipe. It will, it will still have the um, coconut cream in it. So coconut cream, egg, sliced fish, um, kaffir lime. So it's a very, very similar seasoning. But the main point of difference is the fish does not get processed into a paste. The fish is sliced up. And secondly, um, instead of using curry powder, you use fresh spices, right? So I'm just going to flip this over. You can hear the sizzling. It means it's cooking, but it's not ready, right? So usually my staff used to struggle with this because we used to have like a hot plate filled with, uh, you know, otta otta. And they'll be like, oh, is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? I'll tell them, look, the way you tell when it's ready is when you press it down. If you can hear it now, you can hear that sizzle, okay? It means it's still got a lot of liquid content. It's not ready. So you want to let it sizzle a little bit longer. And I'm going to cover it and let it cook a little bit longer. So if you can remember all that, so you still have the cafe lime, you still have the coconut cream, you still have the eggs, you've got the balachan, you've got the sugar, salt or chicken powder. Um, you've got um, the, other, uh, you, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, daun kadok, which is the uh, petal leaves. I'm going to show you. And if you follow me in the Optimum Thermal Cook Facebook group, not the uh, Facebook, uh, not uh, not my Facebook page, but well, I, I do share it there as well. Um, I would have uh, basically posted a uh, some Asian ingredients, and these are the leaves I'm talking about, right? So the Penang version will get wrapped in banana leaf, but you'll have a couple of pieces of these leaves on it as well before you put the fish mixture and wrap it up and then you steam it okay so that's the penang otta otta like i said ingredients virtually identical the main point of difference is the use of curry powder and also the fact that uh, the, the the use of curry powder in the southern version and also the fact that the southern version gets grilled and also the fact that the southern version uses fish paste instead of a sliced fish <coughs> I'm still recovering from my cold, and so is Noah. I've been coughing away, we've been hacking away all night the last few nights. And I actually, after last week's session, I went and met up with uh, the X Files, Dean Haglund, and I filmed a video of him tasting my curry. And I, uh, I hope you saw that. That was quite fun. And I came home, and I lost my voice. And all weekend, I couldn't speak. And then uh, since then, I've just been hacking every night, coughing away. So it's been really yeah. quite a quite an interesting. Um, seven days. So Noah, you looking to eat this? I'm just going to show you what this looks like now. It's just about done. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, that good part. I'm just going to turn this off because it's done. And um, I probably should just brush it with a little bit more oil. And I'm going to just grab a plate, just give me a minute, and show you what it looks like. It's kind of funny, people watch my, because these videos go up on YouTube automatically and they stay there forever, and then every six months I'll get someone complaining about how unprofessional I am that I've got my kid like making all these noises in the background, but uh, I, I'm i kind of like being a little bit cheeky in trying to prove a point that like, um, just because you 
you've got a kid or you know for that matter a, a, a down syndrome kid it doesn't mean your life has to uh, go on hold and it doesn't mean that like uh, you can't do anything okay you can run these kinds of broadcasts okay so that's the otta otta i hope you can see it over there it doesn't look as attractive as it, as it could. <laughs> it's because I've, I've burnt it a little bit on the top. But you get the idea. I'm going to make a few more and I'm going to take more photos so you can see what it looks like. And uh, I'm going to share with you the recipe. And hopefully, maybe if I get a chance over the next couple of days, I might run an ad hoc session showing you how to make the Penang version, which is the steam version. I certainly will make it. I don't know if I'll get the chance to air it live. Um, but I'll, I'll certainly... Um, make it and actually take photos of it if nothing else so i hope you'll keep an eye out for that if you're not a member of the optimum thermo cook uh, live uh, cooking demonstration group make sure you join it because that's where i share most of my content and that's where i stream a lot of my live broadcasts too even the ones outside of these set friday night ones so i look forward to your company and we're going to be posting the recipe um like i said i hope you got to uh, uh watch this i hope people didn't miss out because of all the uh uh, you know, technical changes at the last minute. Um, but I hope to see you in uh, my next session and certainly even before that, uh, live online as well, on uh, through Facebook and all that. I'll catch you later, guys. Thanks again.